Hello, welcome to the Breaking 90 podcast. I'm your host, Alex Harriman. This is my co-host, Jerica Rydell, and we are the coaches of Breaking 90 Fitness. I hope you enjoy the episode. Hey, Jerica, what's going on? Hey, Alex, uh, not too much, just uh, getting organized for the week. Now, it's funny that today you posted on Facebook something about what books are you reading? And I know you asked, kind of like you like to know and stay in the know with that, but I was putting away... Um, all my textbooks from university and college because we as you know we just bought a house about five months ago and we're just putting things away and I was storing them in the corner of a like my closet and I was like putting them in buckets didn't want to see them and then I started thinking why am I getting rid of these like why are we selling them why are we hiding them I started reading them and opening them all up and and you start to wonder like what's going on with the textbook era and, and why are we always resorting to google because mm. Like there's so much reputable information. So I just found myself sitting there for like 30 minutes, hour, just reading through, you know, stuff that you, you don't really remember, or you you can't find on the internet. Like the the other day, someone asked me about a study or something about sleep quality. And so I'm, you know, I'm Googling and I'm Googling and it's like 30 minutes in and I'm trying to find a really good reputable article and I'm still sitting on Google. And I was like, well, why don't I just pull one of my university textbooks? that I know is reputable, that I know has, you know, data and and has headings and I could just open it up. So then I decided to pull them out of the closet and now they're displayed beautifully in my office. So I'm going to start referencing them more. I actually like that a lot. Um, (laughs) There's two things that I want to touch on before I forget. The first is that I have a box in my basement from our move, uh, which is like four (laughs) four years ago now. full of books that that never get used, never get displayed. And I love the idea of having a nice display case or a nice showcase. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think it's just something that you just like, it it always gets pushed to the back. Yeah, I'll do that one day. I'll do that one day. And it's, it's, it is so, so true. Um, But another thing that you said that really resonates is when people reach out to us about coaching, that is a huge factor. There's so much information on the internet. It's overwhelming. And, and there's a ton of great information and there's a ton of terrible information. And then there's everything in between. Like, as you and I both know, there's no right or wrong to coaching and there's no right or wrong to fitness and there's no right or wrong to health. There, there's definitely some things that are wrong, but there's nothing that is absolute. You must do it this way. And um, I think that's one thing that's huge with people with coaching is they just they don't want to have to sift through all that information and they don't want to have to deal with the overwhelm. So when that, that's a huge thing that people come to me about. They say, I just want somebody who can tell me, do it this way, do it this way, do it this way. So it's, it's just one less thing to think about. I mean, you and I have been in the industry for many, many years. So it's, it's not, it's hard for us to view it the same way, but then on the other hand, like, you go see a professional about say a dentist you go see a dentist and it's like I just doc I just want you to tell me what to do with my teeth do I need the filling or not and it's it's the same idea right like we don't we don't want to have to make those kind of decisions because it's an industry we're not familiar with and and I guess it's the same way for people they just want that go-to source that they don't even have to think about they can just get a straight answer and I think too it's important that they come to us because they know we have training on finding that reputable source, kind of sifting through what's, you know, maybe a bit of BS and, and what's legit. So like you said, it's, it's about having that accountability and, and them trusting us that we can provide that sort of information. And it just kind of blew my mind that I was like, I have so much information at my fingertips. And I know we do with Google too, but it just, I find there's just more and more, sketchy information maybe on the internet that your average joe that doesn't know a ton about a b and c is posting about so that the textbook thing has kind of really been resonating and now i just want to read my textbooks and they just look nice they look they nice up to showcase <laughs> and it's it's a little something to talk about when you have guests over right yeah yeah, yeah. cool right on so what do you got for us today what's our topic today i want to talk about plateaus okay and I want to talk about, obviously, the more specific in, in weight loss, because that's something that we focus on. Um, but I want to come at you with like a scenario or a question today, Alex. Okay, so pretend I'm, I'm one of your clients, I'm fairly new, 
And I just had a 10 pound weight loss uh, drop in, you know, the last four or five weeks and, and I'm feeling great. And all of a sudden I've hit a plateau. Now I'm on week two and I haven't seen a change and, and I'm kind of low motivation. I'm coming at you a little, a little sad and I've done, you know, I'm hitting my, my portion controls are great. I'm hitting my water. I'm getting my four, four, maybe five sometimes workouts in and I don't know what to do. What's the first thing you're going to say to me? Cool. Awesome. Love the topic. Um, this is one I definitely wanted to touch on. So uh, one thing that I've found really beneficial and one thing I try to do is I try to reach out to clients before they hit a plateau. So I try to have this conversation with each client before they get to that point um, and explain the reasons we hit plateaus, the fact that it is going to come regardless of how well behaved you are, how consistent you are, you are going to hit a plateau. Um, so what, what typically happens in our first several weeks of training, especially if you ate like garbage leading up to the training. <laughs> so, so often when people make the decision, okay, I'm going to start this new program, um, on the first of the month or Monday or whatever day, they, they often will eat very poorly leading up to it. Mm -hmm. And we'll see the weight spike up as I, I say spike, but we'll see the weight increase because of that and most of that weight increase is water retention so now what happens when you start eating really well training drinking your water you start to flush that water retention so we see a big drop in weight loss initially and then it slows down a little bit but you're still you're still doing really well um, and like you said it's typically gonna have the first you know four or five weeks you might be cruising you might lose 10 pounds feel awesome and then boom that plateau is gonna hit so I try to prepare people for that and I say yeah. No matter how consistent you are, no matter how well you're doing, you're going to be hitting a plateau at some point. You're going to see the weight spike up regardless of how consistent you do. And I just want you to be prepared for that. And, and it's going to be frustrating. You're going to see that number go up on the scale, even though you've been so well behaved. That's when most people will fall off their plan. Right. That's when most people give up without a coach or without somebody to talk them through it and explain why that's happening. Um, and the truth of the matter is the reason it's happening is water retention. So we will definitely dig into water retention today, but before we do, is, is that the direction you wanted to go with this or is there, is there anything else you want to cover while we're, while we're no, at we can, this part? No, we can definitely take it in that direction. I assumed that's kind of what you give me, um, when it comes to that plateau, right? Like there's, there's a lot of factors that play into part, but I would say that's probably the first one that we should, we should dive into. Mm -hmm. Okay. So right off the hop, start, start listing off some of the things that we often talk about. What, what's good, what, what can be factors that lead to water retention? I think the biggest one, and especially in today's, today's day is stress. Mm. Um, especially that been going on with, you know, work, life changing with COVID and, and school kids at home. I think people have been, have been high stress and, and tend to hold their water weight a little bit more than usual. I think sodium is another big one that we should play a part in. Um, yep. Depending on if, you know, before bed you had that, or even a couple of days worth, you're having a high sodium meal and, and you don't even really realize that there's a lot of sodium in that meal, especially if you've been eating super clean uh, the last four to five weeks, um, that's going to play a huge part. Um, sleep, let's throw sleep in there. Sleep's a big one that affects water retention, right? If we're not getting into our deep, into our recovery sleep patterns, we're, we're going to hold that water retention through the night. Yep. What else are we thinking? So uh hydration is a big one and, oh, and this is this one's really um this one's the opposite of what a lot of people imagine yes. so so people are often surprised to find that when we don't drink enough water when we're a little bit dehydrated we actually retain more water and so that's that's basically your body grasping out saying like you're not giving me enough so i'm going to hold on to what you have given me mm -hmm. and so when when we really want to flush that water retention for any given reason um, or just for general health we should be drinking enough water that our body doesn't need to do that doesn't need to go into that defense cycle so staying hydrated drinking lots of water um, actually allows things to run a little bit better a little bit more efficiently and then we don't retain as much because of it um, you mentioned salt but carbs and alcohol are another oh, big oh, one yep um, often to when you start a really, really healthy eating regimen, people will avoid carbs. We know that everybody thinks carbs are the <laughs> devil. 
and I'm going to tell you that they're not, but, uh, <laughs> but when you avoid carbs and you avoid salt and you're just eating lots of protein and vegetables, you, you drop a lot of your water retention, introduce a little bit of carbs, have one night where you eat some pizza or binge a little right. bit and your body whoo, retains mm-hmm. all of that Immediately. water. So you're like, Oh my God, I, I ate two slices of pizza and I'm 10 pounds heavier. <laughs> And I mean, we, we know that's not the truth. We know that we are retaining water, but carbs and alcohol are a big one. Um, getting sick, as we start to get sick, we retain water for yep. women. As you're coming into your cycle, you start to retain cycle. water. Um, and exercise, that's another big one. If, if what, you- Hard have, workout? Yeah, if you have a crazy hard workout one day, your, body, your body's gonna retain water the next day. So you, you said stress, but really, it's any form That's of any type of stress. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the way that our body handles stress. So if there's an injury, if it's a hard workout, if you didn't get enough sleep, your body's under stress, it's under that. Um, it needs to repair. It, it retains water and that's part of the process and it, it's good. It, it means your body's working properly. If it, if it's doing that kind of thing. Yep. Yeah, it's true. Um, I know that's a lot, a <laughs> lot of different things that make us retain water and, um, you know what? Some, sometimes you're going to retain water for no reason at all. You're not, you're and, not even going to be able to pinpoint it. Yeah. And you're not going to be able to, I mean, writing out that list for sure and seeing maybe what are the top three factors that are affecting you or um, you're not going to be able to check all those things off immediately, but obviously looking at maybe the top three that are playing um, a biggest part in your life right now and maybe starting to address those that you can see immediate, maybe immediate or a couple of weeks from now, that's when you'll start seeing the results in that plateau. So so, so we had that big initial drop in weight and now all of a sudden the weight's climbing back up. Typically we see that last anywhere between like three and five days mm-hmm. and then it starts to drop back down. But then once in a while we hit what I would consider a plateau. I mean, people, you're going to have these, these water retention spikes many, many, many times over your journey. And if, if they last two, three, four, five days, I don't even consider that a plateau. That's just a mm-hmm. normal part of the cycle. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, a plateau is when your weight's stuck for like two weeks, weeks. That's what I think too, or more. And, and it happens. And, and can I give you the exact reason that it's happening? No, I can't. Um, but can can, I, yeah, go add something in there. I think that part of the reason, now this is obviously not the exact reason, but I think what happens a lot too, when, you know, you've been in a program for a long time and now you're in a two week, three week plateau. I think people let their guard down a little bit when it comes to being, in a program per se, you know, you're getting comfortable with the training program. You're getting comfortable per se with the portion sizes. You're getting comfortable with knowing your body a little bit. And then sometimes possibly those portion sizes that we, we say is our palm might be a palm and a little bit more and, and you're getting comfortable with the training program. So maybe I'm not pushing as hard or I'm not excited to attack the workout. Um, so just that low motivation or, or just, little plateau that you're seeing can can just those little changes can possibly add up to not burning as many calories throughout the day and that's where we're seeing that that plateau happen because totally you're letting your guard down a little bit totally and and that's something that i i often catch people on even people who have been doing this for a year or longer it's like okay let's go back let's let's do a food log and go over the past week and see how things have been going and it's like Maybe some oil that you're cooking with isn't being accounted for, some dressings that you put on your salad or some sauce mm-hmm. that you put on your chicken. Like, is this stuff significant individually? Not really, but as it all comes together, yeah, it starts to add up. And and I mean, we in our program, we have what we call free foods. No food is free. It all has calories. It all has value. Um we, we call it free because it, it is pretty minor in the big scheme. But when you mm-hmm. pile on a bunch of those sauces and dressings and oils and free foods, all of a sudden you've got an extra four or 500 calories per day, right? Yep. Yep. And that's just the little things that, like you said, do definitely add on if we start to get comfortable. So it's just, I think it's important to just kind of reevaluate when you get to that time and just say, okay, I've addressed my physical, emotional stress, addressed my water. Now let's just go back to the basics and look at my portions and, and, you know, look at those little things. And, and then likely you'll see a break in that two, three week plateau. 
And so for anybody who's listening to this right now, if you if you are stuck in a plateau or if you're if you've been stuck in a plateau or if you haven't but you you know now that one is coming, one thing that I think is huge to remember and huge to help you get through that is to gain a pound of fat, we need to eat 3500 extra calories. Okay? Mm-hmm. So so what that mean, what does that mean to you? What that means is say that every day you're burning 2000 calories. We're going to we're going to keep it really simple and say 2000 calories is a nice round number. And you you know that you're burning 2000 calories and you've got your calorie intake set to we'll say even say even say 1900 calories so you're okay. 100 100 calorie yeah. deficit. That means that over 35 days you lose a pound. Right? Yeah. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit more complicated than that. I mean, our, our metabolic rates change over time, but, but just for the sake of numbers, it's, it's going to be very close to that. 35 days, you'll lose a pound if you're in a very, very small deficit. Now, if you are eating in a deficit and your weight is plateauing or your weight is increasing, the only solution is water retention. Because we know that if your weight goes up a pound, but you were eating in a deficit and you truly are eating in a deficit, the only way your weight can go up is through water tension. Yep. You can't, you can't gain a pound of fat eating in a caloric deficit. I think it, it's also important to note too, and this is why we have coaches, but I think it's also important to note that as we lose weight, like let's say I'm 20 pounds lighter, my body doesn't require the same amount of energy it needed to sustain life 20 pounds heavier than it does now at 20 pounds lighter. So having coaches to, you know, maybe alter to, you know, that, that rec- recommended daily portion control to change that a little bit, knowing that you don't need as much to keep you in that mm-hmm. deficit yeah. is important because we have to keep that in mind. Like you said, it's minor because yeah. we still need those calories to sustain our daily activities, but it's, it's important to keep that in mind. So when we do lose that 20 or so pounds, maybe we do need to attack that workout or, or get our daily um, 20 minutes of purposeful movement in for sure. Or maybe we need to reevaluate our portions like we talked about, but um, it's important to note for sure. But at the end of the day, like you said, it's, it required 3,500 calories to, to eat a, or to gain a, a pound of fat. So it's all coming down to water retention. And I, I fully believe that as well. And, and so just, just to circle back to that, if you, if you know you're burning about 2000 calories a day and then tomorrow morning, you're a pound heavier, <laughs> ask yourself, did you eat 5,500 calories? Yeah. Right. And it's and, possible on an, uh, if you had a full. Oh, I can, I can do that. I can do that. No problem. No problem. <laughs> but, but, but you have to think about that. No, did you really? Most yeah. people did not Did not. And, no. and, and truthfully, if you ate an extra 3,500 calories, you're, you're, you, that means you gained a pound, but your weight might be up like five or six pounds on the because scale of the water because that of comes the water retention. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I think that's really important what you're saying too, though. So when, when I say that you're burning 2000 calories a day, that's right now, that's today. It might be tomorrow, it might be the next day, but if you're, if you're not moving, if you're not exercising, if you're eating like crap, that number is going to slowly start burning less and less every day. As we get smaller and smaller, we're going to burn less and less every day. So um, it is important to rem- remember that that number is, is ever changing. It's, mm-hmm. it's, if you're burning 2000 calories today, it doesn't mean you're always burning 2000 calories. If we gain muscle, we actually start to burn more. And so there, there's lots of things that come into effect. And I would encourage anybody that's setting a caloric goal for themselves or, or looking at a calorie calculator, don't go based off of like your end goal. Like if you're 200 pounds right now and one day you want to be 150, don't base your calories off 150 pound person Mm -hmm. because it's going to give you a massive deficit compared to what you're used to break it up right now work, work towards 190, then work towards 180. And that'll give you enough calories to have some freedom and not feel like you're super restricted. And it'll also give your body some time to adjust, right? Absolutely. And I think a take home message too would be a plateau is not always a bad thing. And I think we always kind of look at it in this negative 
context, like, oh, like, what am I doing wrong? Or I think it's a great time to sit down and reevaluate and have that discussion with your coaches and, and to see what, like, what's time to, what should we focus on now? So I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I think it's a great time for your body to maybe take some what much needed rest. Mm. It could be a way your body's saying like, you're training way too hard. And in my case, that's what's happened to me in the past. I plateaued in weight, I plateaued in, in my strength. Um, and that was a sign that I just needed to just relax a little bit and take those recovery days and and drink my water. And and so it was really important to, to see that, I think. And I, I just don't always want it to be a negative thing. It's, it's, a, it's an eye opener for sure. Yeah, you're a hundred percent right. And, and I actually encourage people to celebrate plateaus and like whether or not they want to is another thing. But to me, if you, if you hit a plateau now, but you're 10 pounds lighter than when you started, that's worth celebrating. You are stuck, stuck at a weight that you once would have paid money to be at. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, if, if 200 pounds was your starting point, now you're stuck at 190. Congratulations. That's your new normal. Celebrate your that. Your body's, yeah, happy at 190 right now. It's a huge win. Celebrate that. What, what we really have to understand is our bodies don't want to change. To gain weight or to lose weight requires us to get uncomfortable, mm-hmm. right? Like if you, if you want to gain weight, you need to eat more. If you want to lose weight, you need to eat less. Either way, that's, that's forcing your body to become uncomfortable. It's forcing your body to do what it is unusual and a little bit outside of its norm. And so your body's trying to stay the same. It wants to eat the exact same amount every day. Um, mm-hmm. we, we have to, you have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. You have to step outside of your comfort zone in order to grow, in order to change. So true. So true. I had one, one client uh, in the past come to me and, and they had a, a three week plateau, but then I, they said to me, Oh, I just had a bunch of actual death deaths in my family. Mm. And that was brought up well into the conversation. And I was like, hold on, hold on. You've just been experiencing a ton of emotional stress and you're upset that you didn't lose weight. How do you expect your body to lose weight totally. when it's in a moment of, of stress like that? It wants to retain and wants to get into that comfortable that happy weight so the fact that you came held steady at this new low Mm -hmm. right for that time during that high stress is a huge win and it's just changing your mindset Um, and that's something else we like to talk about and seeing it in a different light so even getting through like holidays and stuff the same thing right oh i didn't lose any weight during this this holiday this vacation yeah but you didn't gain weight (laughs) that's exactly (laughs) (laughs) like you can use the other 50 weeks of the year to lose if you can maintain through those most difficult weeks that's amazing amazing yep love it uh yeah that's a great topic i think we covered a lot of of takeaways and a lot of mindset shifts in this episode um is there anything that you think we missed on and you feel pretty good about that? I, mean, I feel pretty good. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so one thing I want to start doing is, is giving uh, one little quick kitchen tip recipe, quick tip, kitchen tip, something as a takeaway for, for the listeners. Um, do you, do you have something that you think is really beneficial or that's really helped you that you could give them as a quick takeaway? Yeah. So I'm going to do some, say something that I've always do but pretty much every week. So I'm going to keep it simple for the first one and say that I'm not a meal prepper in the sense that I don't put my carb, my protein, my fat in one container and then do, I don't make my full meals and then put them in the fridge. I found a lot of success with buffet style meal prep. I like change. I like choosing what I want that day. So I actually put a full container of sweet potato, a full container of veggies. I'll fill up a full container of different proteins. And then in the morning I get to pick and choose what I want for lunch. So I'll put a little bit of this meat and a little bit of this veggie. And and then that way it's always different, but I have a ton of things prepped and ready. Maybe I'll grab a hard boiled egg for snack today, but not tomorrow. So having for me a variety of things in separate containers, ready to go allows me to have variety in my, in my lunches throughout the week so that I'm not finding that I'm getting sick and tired of the same lunch every day. So do you, do you prep that all on the same day or do you prep different days throughout the week? I I try to do it maybe a little bit on on the Sunday per se, but no, if I'm making, you know, broccoli on a Tuesday, I'm going to make just a 
way more than I would need so that I have again, that, that option to put into my lunch the next day or maybe two days from now. So I always try to make more and then I keep it in the same container so that I can pick and choose. That's a really great idea. Yeah. A lot of fun. Yeah. (laughs) Awesome. Cool. Uh, I think, like I said, we've covered a lot in this episode, so let's wrap it up at that. Um, for everybody listening, thanks for listening. Um, you, you can find more of our episodes now on YouTube, uh, and all the major, um, podcast platforms, Spotify, Apple podcasts, whatever you listen to your podcasts on. Um, we, we'd really appreciate it if you guys, uh, review it, rate it, leave a comment, send us a message, whatever you need to do to get in touch. We appreciate all of the feedback and we're, we're looking to grow. So if there's topics you want to hear about in the future, make sure you reach out, let us know, or drop it in the comments below. Um, it, it means a lot to us. So thanks for listening. I hope you guys found it useful. And uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Awesome.